Good morning. Good to be with you today as we continue in our study of John's Gospel. Today we study the 19th chapter. Uh, the time has arrived. Jesus is to be crucified. And so we pick up in the 17th verse of the 19th chapter. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of, of the skull, which is in Aramaic is called Golgotha. Here they crucified him and with him two others, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. A couple of things in this. One, uh, Jesus carried his own cross, it says. In the other gospels and the synoptics, it is recorded that Simon of Cyrene uh, carried Jesus's cross for him, Jesus being weak because of the floggings and loss of blood. And, and so Cyrene was called, the, Simon the Cyrene was called to, to assist. Uh, Jesus is shown in most of the uh, presentations as carrying the full cross, that is the upright member and the cross, right, uh, cross member. And the cross member was shown to maybe be uh, a third of the way down. However, the typical Roman cross was in a T, and the upright member was permanently in the ground, and the individual to be crucified was, was uh, nailed to the cross member laid down and nailed uh, uh, in the wrist. Uh, nailed in the hands, the nails would, would tear through the flesh. The other part of this is interesting that, that uh, the cross member was, was affixed before Jesus began to walk toward the cross. He was crucified between other criminals. Perhaps this was a, a continued uh, testing of the Jews, a continued uh, humiliation of Jesus to crucify him but two, between two criminals. They were a terrorist, and Jesus had been charged uh, with being a terrorist. So here he is crucified. The other thing that we will see in this, uh, this story of the crucifixion is that none of these things happened by chance. We can see God's presence and, and God's work in this process. So we know that Jesus is ultimately in control of his own destiny. Here they crucified him and with two others one on each side and Jesus in the middle. There's a hymn that says, on a hill far away stood the old rugged cross. Uh, that was not entirely uh, correct, a beautiful hymn, but Jesus was crucified in a place where there was high traffic. The crucifixion was designed to be a deterrent. And so they wanted everybody to see this. They wanted uh, it to be a public event, just like in our modern times, we have had public hangings. This was the same thing as a deterrent to keep people from uh, committing crimes. So here is where Jesus was. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. So this tit for tat, this game between uh, the Romans and the Jews continued. And this sign was, was placed uh, where Jesus was crucified near the city and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. Aramaic being the 
language that the Jews used, Latin being the language of Rome and Greek, the common language that was spoken that was used in business. So another point to, to emphasize or to show that this was meant to be seen by everyone. Uh, this was a public crucifixion. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be the king of the Jews. Well, this was meant, I think, as a dig or to continue to annoy the, uh, the Jewish leaders. And so they wrote, you know, the king of the Jews. Well, well, the Jewish leadership says, no, don't write that, said he claimed to be king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. So you can see this antagonism that uh, is being carried out here by Pilate and uh, the Jewish officials protested, but Pilate answered, I have written what I have written. It stands. In verse 23, when the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. Uh, obviously, there were four Roman soldiers that were in charge of this crucifixion that uh, they were in charge of, of nailing uh, Jesus to the cross. He was, uh, they were the ones that, that got Simon of Cyrene to, to help and carry the cross member. But there were four of them, and so they divided the garment, the clothes that Jesus was wearing into four pieces. There were probably the, his sandals, a belt, an outer garment, and then the undergarment. And the undergarment they're talking about the, was seamless. It was woven into one piece from top to bottom. It was kind of like a, a long shirt or a short skirt. It was from the neck down to the knees or ankles, and it was all one piece. And it's interesting that the scriptural application of this, uh, Josephus, the high priest, had a undergarment uh, that was all of one piece, and it could be a subtle message of Jesus being the high priest, the new high priest. Uh, of the Jews, but it is it is shown here that the garment was seamless and there were four pieces that he had on. In verse 24, let's not tear it, they said to one another, let's decide by lot who will get it. They roll the dice. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, they divided my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. This is found in Psalm 22, 18, and there are numerous references in the Old Testament to the crucifixion and the life of Jesus. And this is just in perfect alliance. Uh, in the Psalms to the crucifixion of Jesus in the New Testament. So this is what the mothers did. You wonder what Jesus' mother was thinking, what Mary was thinking uh, at this time to see her son uh, being nailed to the cross, to be stumbling due to blood loss to being assisted by Simon. You wonder what was going on in her, in her mind. Now, the disciples had fled by this point, 
And verse 25 says, Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, which, uh, whose name was Salome, Mary the wife of Clophas, and this is the only time that Clophas is mentioned, so we don't know anything about him other than he was, uh, was married to Mary. And Mary Magdalene, whose name comes up uh, frequently in New Testament. Then in verse 26, when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son, and to the disciple, here is your mother. The, the person that, that Jesus is referring to, we believe to be uh, John, although he is not identified. The only person identified as who, the, uh, who Jesus loved is Lazarus. But John is not identified, but with, with the Gospel of John, with the three letters of John, with Revelation by John, it seems uh, improbable that it would be anyone else other than John, uh, the author of this, uh, this Gospel, the one whom Jesus loved. And at that time, it was permitted that a transfer of responsibility to, uh, to someone could be accomplished. And Jesus, even on the cross, even uh, in the process of being crucified, looked down, saw his mother, thought about her care. Now, we, her husband Joseph hasn't been mentioned since uh, he and Mary and uh, had been left or had left the temple when Jesus was left there. We haven't heard anything about him since then. Uh, we could assume that he is, is dead or they are separated for whatever reason, but he was not there. And so he looked down and said to John, uh, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. Uh, John did what, is it, what was asked. The disciples had, had gone. His brothers were not believers. They didn't come to accept Jesus until after his crucifixion. And then in verse 28, later knowing that all was now completed so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. So Jesus is in human form. He is suffering. He said, I am thirsty. And of course, scripture in the 69th Psalm uh, alludes to this. He was fully aware of fulfilling prophecy. Uh, in other gospels, the, the drink offered was refused. This that he was refused or he consumed was a jar of wine vinegar. Uh, and they soaked it, a sponge in it. Um, put the sponge on a stalk of a hyssop plant and lifted it up to Jesus' lips. The, the spiritual uh, usage here is, is more than obvious. The hyssop plant, was the stalk was used to, to sprinkle blood on the doorposts of the Israelites so the death angel would pass over. And here the hyssop plant, this, this stem of this hyssop plant was used to hold the sponge up. This cross often is shown to be quite tall, but in reality it was only about uh, 10 feet tall. And so the disciples would, would be able to 
to reach Jesus if they were around. The soldier would, when they held the, the sponge up, could easily reach uh, Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, he said, it is finished. It is finished. And the Greek translation of, of course, in English, it, it requires three words, but in Greek, there was, there was only one word, and that word meant, in Greek, the debt is paid. So Jesus said, it is finished. I have paid the debt that you could not pay yourself. You could not recover from the sins without me paying the debt that you owe God. Jesus said, it is finished. The debt is paid. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus decided when it was over, not the Romans, not the Jews. Jesus decided when it was over. He gave his life so that we might spend eternity with him, that we might have forgiveness of sins. To God be the glory. Let us pray together. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you most for your son, Jesus. Thank you for the lessons learned here. Thank you, Father, for uh, your healing touch upon those that are ill. Thank you, Father, for uh, traveling mercies for those that are on the road. We pray, Father, that you would be with our church and be with the leadership that you would guide them and lead them in reaching out to those that are lost. We pray for families and friends, and we thank you, Father, that you have provided your word for us to study, that you have provided your Holy Spirit, your advocate to walk with us and guide us and direct us. And Father, we I pray that, that you would hear our prayers and that your will would be done. We ask all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. God bless you.